So before we begin, any questions from the previous class? Have you all done hands-on? Any questions? Yeah, Preeti, I have one doubt in uh, Git RM and uh, Git RM my connection cache. So yeah. could you please uh, explain once again what is a major difference? Because when I tried yesterday in my lab, uh, when I did a Git RM, it, uh, the file will be deleted from working directory, but uh, it still stays in uh, staging area as well as local repo. Am I correct? Yeah. No, no. Git RM will delete the file from both the places, from the working directory and local ah. repository. Git okay. RM cache uh, will keep it in the working directory and remove it from local repository. Oh, uh, yeah, got it. So, yeah, it, it happened same thing yesterday. So, I was having some confusion. So, wanted to check. Yeah, have you watched the recording? Yeah, yeah I watched the recording and I the practice it. Good. All right. All right, then. So let's begin with uh, today's topic. We were talking about the concept of branching, right? Yes. Yeah, we have done the branching, we have created a new branch, we made some changes, we have seen the parallel development and we have also seen the concept of merging. Today, let us see another interesting concept of merging when you have a conflict. What is this conflict and all? Let's see. Here, I am on the master branch. Okay, listen the sequence, listen the steps carefully here, yeah, follow the steps carefully. I'm going to create a new file here. Let's say file4.txt. Okay, and I have created Okay, I created some file. So what would be the status? The same old story like the, you have the changes, you have to commit the changes, right? So git add file 4 and then git commit minus m on master or else let's say fourth file, some message like this. Okay, done. Changes were done and you can see the status yes it's clean and you can see four files and you can see the port commit okay so yes everything is good do you think this fourth file fourth uh, commit available on other branch no obviously no right let us see Let's go to B1, git check out B1. Okay, go to B1 branch. So we are on B1 branch here. Okay, on B1, if you check the files, you are having only three, right? So uh, let's suppose, okay, I'm, uh, I just have another requirement. I want to create the same file here, file four. Right? So, okay, I have just created some files. So, it's in the working directory. Okay, and you see on branch B1, it is untracked. So, let us add it. Git add file 4. Okay, git commit minus m. Let's say file 4 on B1, something like this. Done. And if you see the status, yes, it is all clean. You can see that it is clean. You have four files. Everything is good. Okay, I'm done. Now, this is like a maybe temporary branch, right? I want to integrate these changes into master. How to do that? How to integrate changes from one branch to another? Get merge. So, for some merge. 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 Where you want to merge. First switch. Check out master. First, switch the branch. Give me one second, please.
right? We have switched the branch. Now that we switch the branch. Now what is the command to merge? What is the source branch? B1. And the destination B1. branch master. March. Yeah. So if uh, this is the command. So if I run this, will it merge successfully? What happens? Can it merge successfully? Okay. And what happens to this now? Sorry, I can't Already same file is there, right? We may get a conflict, right? First, let's see what happens. See, we got a conflict. Auto merging failed. Auto merging means automatic merge failed. Okay, there is a conflict in this file. Because automatic merge failed, you have to fix the conflicts and commit the result. Means it cannot merge successfully. Why are we getting this conflict? What is the reason? Same file is in both. Is it only branches. same file? Same line. Also getting changed. So, to a certain extent, it is correct, but not completely. There is something which happens at the back end, which you should understand to know the reason of conflict. Okay, you should know the reason for conflict. Uh, generally, we think that it's a file name. It's not always the same file name. Now, let's talk about the reason for the conflict. Let's suppose you listen carefully here. Generally, people think it's the same file, but there is beyond that. Let's see. There were two branches. First step, what I did, I went to master branch, correct? Created here file four and made some commit. Let's say the commit name, I mean, commit ID is A. Okay, is this commit ID available on B1 branch? It's not available, right? It's not there. Then I went to B1 branch. Okay, here I made again that file four. Okay, I made a commit, commit B. Right? I made this commit. Is this commit available on master? No. No, it no. is not available. Okay, fine. Third step, what I did, I tried to merge. What is the meaning of merge? Merging means integrating. integrating changes from source branch to destination branch, which is master in our case. Means whatever changes on B1 should come and sit in master. So if you check the log of this file 4 on B1, what is the log commit history of file 4? Simply only this one, right? And what is the commit history of uh, file 4 on master? What is the commit history? Right? A. Yeah. Simply A. Correct? Now as per the meaning of merge, as per the meaning of merge, B should come and sit here. Okay, that, that's what it is, right? It should, this B should come and sit here means it should override A. Will Git do that? If Git does that, what is the point of using Git? It should not override this. It's, or else, should it keep only A and ignore B? Yeah, incoming changes, right? See, imagine you are integrating, means let's say this is a box, okay? This snapshot or this box, whatever you imagine should come and sit here. Does it mean that it will overwrite A? Or else it will, because it should not overwrite, will it keep only A and ignore B? Will it do that? If it does that, we don't need a get. What is the point of using it, right? Means it should not overwrite existing changes or else it should not ignore incoming changes. Uh, yeah. Because here Git doesn't know which changes to keep. And then it raises a conflict. And why is this happening? This is happening because your source branch is missing some commits which are in destination. Means, see, if this source would have got A, let's say, imagine this has got A here and then A, B. Do you get a conflict? Will you get a conflict if this B1A is also present? Will you get a conflict? I guess no. No, right? You go not get a conflict. Means why are you getting a conflict? Same file, 
and also source is missing some comments. One reason is same file, but if it is just same file, it will not happen. Same file plus some uh, source is missing some comments which are in destination, like source is missing commit A which is in destination, you get a conflict. Okay, let us take the same scenario with another file. Do you remember yesterday we did with file one? Okay, let's say there is commit A. You made a branch, let's suppose, then you made B1. Obviously, file 1, commit A will be there. Then let's suppose on the same file, you made commit B. Okay, then you merge. You will not get a conflict. Now, will you get a conflict? If no. you see the snapshot, same file here also. Same file. If you see the snapshot, this is A. <clears throat> this is A. And B, whenever you merge this box, A, B will come and say, it is not overwriting, it's not ignoring. So, Git doesn't have con this Git doesn't have confusion. Understood, everyone? Yeah? Yes. yes. So, it's not just simply same file, same line, same content. Git always with works with respect to commits. Earlier also I told you, right? You can't merge one file to another. You merge the commits. Means when you merge, your commits from one branch would be integrated into the other branch. Isn't it? So, whenever you merge, what's happening? The commits from the source branch would come and sit into the destination branch. Am I clear? So, the reason for the conflict is same file and also if source is missing some commits, which is happening in our case. The first case, the blue one. So this is what happens at the back end. Majority of people think that, okay, the same file and same same content, so you get a conflict. But this is what happens at the back end. One should have clarity on this so that uh, you know you can resolve it and you know when you get a conflict and all. And one more thing, conflicts are not something which are bad. Okay, it's good to have conflicts, isn't it? Yeah, why it is good to have conflicts? Why do you, why should you have conflict? Why? There are uh, two files hmm. uh, that different persons are using, hmm. but uh, the content will be the different. In that case, the file content will be the different. In that exactly. case, it will come. So it's not something wrong which you should avoid. It's not something wrong happening. You should try avoiding. No, it's a good to have. See, Git is after all a tool, right? It cannot decide which changes to keep in such case. So as a person who owns these files, you should make a decision. But Git will inform you. It will not overwrite. It will not ignore. It will inform you. It is not overwriting, right? It's not taking its own decision. So it is you who have to decide which changes to keep, which changes to ignore. Same is the case with another person, you get the conflict. Same is the scenario. So, uh, Preeti, when you say comments are missing, uh, can you please explain in that uh, in a practical way? So, which comment is missing? So, when we try to merge it to the source, yeah, source explained uh, with the IDs also. See here, commit A means some ID X, Y, Z, A, B, 6, 8, 7, 9. Okay, this is missing on B1 because it is made on A, a master and it's not there on B1. <laughs> Second step, what we did, we made a commit there. Again, this B means something 8, 7, 6, some IDs. IDs I can't write here, right? That's the only. Thing, uh, I have instead of that ID, I have written alphabet. So, Prithi, so uh, a conflict can happen uh, in even uh, some other file name also created in between, right? While integrating, you get a conflict, no? Some other file meaning? Yeah, for here uh, we are considered file four, right? For mm -hmm. even uh, branch, main yeah. branch, right? Uh, master yeah. branch. Uh, if someone created a file, so you get a conflict. Mm -hmm. It's about commit respect to the file name. Correct. One, two, three, because everything, whatever is in master, is a, is there on B one as of now. Later on, if they make something on file three, then yeah, something else is made on B one. Yeah, you may get conflict with any file. 
it's not specific to the file uh, the that's a concept it's specific Nagara to different the community. Hmm, tell me it's about it's about the, uh, the the difference in the commit ids right in both branches no yeah see here with the ids i'm explaining i have considered this as a commit b commit c commit here also a b c okay and this is b okay like five four three four or else this one four d d c now whenever i'm committing this four d d c zero four is not there on source branch sorry uh, sorry, this one. This is the 5434. This 54343 is not there on this B1 source branch. Hence, you get a conflict. Talking with respect to these IDs may be complex. So, I took them as ABC. See, this is your source. Correct? This is your destination. Agree, everyone? Now, yeah, yeah. this commit 5434 is missing on source B1. Are you there, Nagaraj? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This 5434 EC is not there on this source branch. And you are trying to merge from this source to this one. And this is with respect to the same file. This is on file 4. I mean, this commit is for file 4. This is also file 4. This 5434 is missing. This is like uh, in the diagram representation. This is commit A. This is commit B. Commit A is missing on, this, on source. Hence, you are getting a conflict. I took okay. this like A. Okay, got it. This is not there on B. I mean, this is not there on this is B. Hence, you get a conflict. Here, we did not get conflict because see, whatever are here are here. But later on, if you make any changes here on master, if it is not there on B1, you will get a conflict there also. But that's a concept. Okay, fine. You got a conflict. How do you fix it? See, Git cannot fix it, right? Git is after all a tool. Now, as a person who created the files, see, this is another advantage of using VS Code Editor. Let me open it with a notepad. See, notepad also showing you, right? This head indicates this is coming from the current branch, destination branch. I'm on destination. This is from B1. Okay, notepad also, it shows you that way. But this VS Code editor is a good editor. Here you can see, accept current change means I want to keep only this one. Or else you can accept incoming change means only this good morning. Or else both. Or else you want to compare. All these options are available with this VS Code editor. Right? Or else if you just take up this notepad thing, If you just check this, you don't have such options. You have to edit this file manually, like how you edit any notepad. Okay, that's it. And the advantage you have with VS Code Editor. Also, in real time, those changes might be huge, right? So, this is how you can handle them with this VS Code Editor. That's another advantage of this good editor. So, now you can choose. Like, I want to keep both of them. Or else you have to edit this manual. Edit means, you know, right? Just edit the file. Remove all these headers, all these unnecessary things. And you have to edit manual. Or else it's in VS Editor. I can choose this. Done. Once you make changes in Git, what you should do? After modifying any file, where will be your changes? Staging area. Modification will be first in the working directory, right? So you add and commit minus a m resolve the conflicts. Done. Right. Done. So it is fixed. Now this is the content on master. What would be the content of the same file on B1? What would be the content of the same file, file 4 on B1? 
See, only its own content. It will not be modified. Only destination branch will be affected when you merge. Right? B1 has got only its own content, its own line. Whereas on master, because... Or whereas on master, because we have merged, we have both the lines. Also, we have chosen both the both changes. Clear everyone? Any confusions? And now, where would yeah. this happen? When do you get conflicts? This is general practice. Whenever you are working on files on your repositories, because uh, like you will be working on multiple branches, this is quite common. Not only this, you will get conflict with other person changes also. That is more practical. If we will look into that also, we will take up those scenarios also. And I would like to remind you one more thing. We are still on local. We did not go to remote yet. Did we go to remote repos? Still, no. we are on local no. only. No. We are on local only. Okay, this one. We did not go to remote. There are few things uh, we should do here and then we'll proceed with that. Okay. Good to move. Any questions or any confusions from anyone? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, All right. So this is about branching and merging, the concept behind the conflicts, right? We will look into again this conflicts part. Of when we go for remote, we get conflicts from other persons. We will also talk about that. Okay, now let's look into another interesting concept called git stash. What is stash? Let's suppose you are in working directory, you are making some changes to the files. Okay, then something came up on priority. I need to um, I need to, let's say, <clears throat> I need to work on some other priority. Let's say in the working directory, file one, file two are being modified. I have got a priority task. I should make some changes on file three and I should commit this immediately to local and then to remote. Okay, I have to do this. I have some priority tasks. File one, file two, half of the work is done. Okay, but if I keep here, it will keep on asking me to add and commit, right? I don't want to do that because they were incomplete. At the same time, I don't want to discard them because I'm always halfway done. So what you want to do? So what you can do? In that case, what you can do is you can switch them or else, I mean, in that case, you can move these changes to some temporary shelves and continue your incomplete tasks. And this is called stash. Whenever you are done with this priority task, if you want to continue that incomplete task, you can do unstash. Means you can get the changes back from temporary shelves into the working directory. There is a question from Sagar, how to open terminal in VS Code Editor. Sagar, in the VS Code Editor, if you go to your VS Code Editor, <clears throat> Okay, here you will see terminal option. Launch the new terminal. It will open at the bottom. Okay. okay. Yes, understood the concept of stash. Yeah. Yep. So any unstaged changes in the working directory, unstaged changes. Remember, it is unstaged, not untracked. Unstaged changes can be moved to temporary shells because whenever you are committing, whenever you are merging, it's always good practice to have the repository clean. But you can't discard them. So you put them on hold and get the changes back. This is what is stash. Let us see practically with hands on. Yes. 
Ah, hi, Prithi. So when we stash this uh, files, right? So we'll be able to check out the branch uh, to the other branch. Yeah, you can. You can. Oh. Let me show you. See, git status on master branch. It's all good. On file one, I'm making some changes. Okay, I made some change. Okay, now tell me where is the change? This is the working directory. It is in the working directory. Change is in the working directory. You have to add and commit, obviously. File tools are making. You can have unstated changes on any number of files, right? Okay, now if you see git status, see unstaged changes on file one and file two. It's not clean. It will be never clean. What I have to do, I have to add and commit. But I want to, I don't want to do it because it's incomplete. Those are incomplete. At the same time, I don't want to discard them because we are halfway done. So what I want to do, I just want to put them on hold. Okay, then repository becomes clean. I can attend my priority tasks. Later on, I can continue this incomplete work. How to do that? Git stash. See, do you see that here M is gone? Okay, and also if you see the stash, uh, sorry, um, if you see the status, it's clean. See, file one, this line is gone. File two, line is gone. Do you think that they were gone? They were uh, deleted? They were stashed. How do you know? Git stash list. Every stash. Typo. Every stash will have a stash number. See? This is the stash number. Every stash will have its stash number. Okay. To see what are all the things there. Git stash show that stash number. Yeah. Do you see that two files change, two insertions, right? You, it will show you two files were stashed there. Now you can commit, you can merge, you can do anything. You can check out like some of you are asking if you want. Yes, you can check out. You can do anything. Okay. Now I'm back here on master. Now I want to get the changes back. How to get the changes back? What is that called as? Get the temper, get the changes from temporary virtual shelves. So get stash pop stash number. Let me get the list again. This is the stash number. Every stash will be created from zero, indexing from zero. Now to get it, get stash pop stash number. Okay, git stash pop stash number. Do you see that? Uh, stash number, it will get the changes back. And also pop means it will delete from the stash list. Means it will delete from temporary shells also. I'm repeating, it will get the changes back. And also it will delete from the temporary shells. Let me show you. See, do you see that? Drop this. Means it cleaned up the temporary shells also. First... See, your changes are back. It deletes from temporary shelves as well. Nothing on temporary shelves. Nothing on the stash list. Understood, everyone? Don't worry. So, is there any options to... Sorry, uh, Prithi. Uh, is there any options to stash uh, certain file name? Or uh, by default, unstaged all the... Unstaged changes. Files. All the unstaged changes. Okay. Unstaged changes means all the changes in the working directory will be stashed. Okay. Now again, I'm stashing. So it's clean now. It's clean. You see the stash list. Yes, you have it created. Now, how do you unstash? This one, right? So it will delete from the temporary shelves also. But let's say I want to stash. Sorry, I want to unstash. Means get the changes back. But don't delete from temporary shells. That's possible through stash apply. Yes? Yeah? 
So stash apply means it will keep a copy on temporary shelves as well. First, see, you don't see something like dropped, right? Your changes are back. If you see it, yes, it's still there. Why you need it, I'll tell you. But understood what pop does and apply does? What is the difference between pop and apply? Why you should do that, I'll tell you. Pop, apply. This will unstash, means bring the changes from temporary shelves, delete from temporary shelves as well. This will unstash, but this will not delete from temporary shelves. Got the difference now? Yeah. Why you should do it? See, you can do this apply so that it remains on temporary shelves. And in case if you want to continue this incomplete work on some other branches, there were other branches as well, right? Like B1 branch, B2 branch. You may, let's say you decided to continue this incomplete work on another branch. You can do that, which is unstash. Got it? Understood and clear? Yes. Yeah. So this temporary shell is available for other branches so at the same time? Mm, yes, this stash is repository level. Yes, you may switch okay. to other branch and you can unstash there also. Yes. Any more questions? Okay. So this is the stash and unstash. And, um, okay. Now, see here, you still have this changes. If you want, you may do stash. First, let me check stash list. Okay, you already have it because I unstash, but still it is there, right? Now, if you want, you can stash again, okay? But if you stash, whatever in the stage, or sorry, whatever in the working directory, any number of files will be stashed. Three, four, whatever are there. Suppose you want to stash a particular file only. That's called partial stash or a specific stash with the minus P flag. See, it will ask you on every file. See, this is file one. Do you want to stash? See, you can put yes. Again, second file. I, I don't want it. No. See, now if you see the status, only one file is staged, file one, file two is not stashed. Do you see that? Now, because it's only one file, you can stash it separately, right? See, you have so many stashes. Whichever changes you want to get back, you can unstash it. Possible. And the stash indexing starts from Zero. Do you see that? Zero, one, two, and so on. Yeah. For listing contents in uh, that uh, stash file is git uh, what uh, stash list, right? Mm -hmm. Git stash list will show you all the stashes. Can you repeat your question if it is something else? No. Uh, yeah. If we are uh, stash, uh, so many files. So I want to restore only one file. But I don't know what are the contents inside that. Hmm. So git stash show uh, action, right? Uh, stash. The show okay. will show you what what changes were there stashed here. File one is stashed in stash one. Okay. Got it. okay. And uh, now let's say I want to unstash, pop or apply or else. Let's say I don't want to unstash. Okay. But I just want to clear it off from the temporary shells. That is also possible. This will delete from temporary shells without unstashing. Maybe I realized I don't want it anymore. See? Okay. The stash number got moved. You can drop everything. Suppose. I want to drop everything. Stash clear. 
everything got cleaned up. What is the difference between drop and clear? Yes. Can you observe any difference here? So, uh, for dropping, we need to mention the task list number. See, drop is used to delete a specific stash only, a particular stash. Correct? Whereas this will delete all the stashes. Understood now? So it depends on how you want to clean up, whether you want to clean up everything or whether you want to clean up only few things. Uh, like uh, when we push these uh, uh, changes uh, to the remote, right? Uh, so one second, one second. Firstly, you are pushing which changes to remote? See, only committed changes will be pushed. Committed changes will be pushed to local. Whatever in local will be pushed to remote. So not unstaged, uncommitted, or else these stashes will not be pushed to remote. Now, rephrase your question, please. No, no, no. I think I that answer is. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's right. Mm. <laughs> See, only the committed change, whenever you are merging from one branch to another, only the commits will be merged. Similarly, when you are moving to re, um, local, right, you have to move your staged changes only. Here we are talking about unstaged changes. Okay, your staged changes will only go to local. Then the committed changes will only go to remote. That is the flow, right? Always uh, refer to this architectural diagram. Okay. So always, whenever you are having any confusions, see, look at here. Look at this. Right? We did not go to remote, of course. We were still on local. Yeah, maybe tomorrow we shall start with remote. So, Prithi, uh, the minus P option is there, right, where we can select the files which is to be uh, moved to the temporary shelf, right, uh, while stashing. So, while unstashing, right, uh, do we have the same option? We can pick uh, what other files need to be, you know, we back to your working directory. Unstash the stashes. Okay, what is the unstash command actually? Stash pop or stash draw, stash clear, uh, stash pop and stash apply, right? So stash pop and stash apply will take the stash number. Okay. See, I did get stash minus P. Okay, a particular file. Then I got a stash number like this. Now, when I unstash, I'll stash, I'll unstash. This stash number means the same thing is happening, right? You don't need again the file name there. Got my point? You uh, you did get stash minus p a particular file here. Let's say file one is uh, is stashed here, so it got the stash number which is having that one. Now you unstash this one with git stash apply this stash number. So you are unstashing so, the same thing whichever you have stashed. Yeah, my question was actually for a stash, right? Uh, we stashed a, a couple of files to the temporary shelf. So while unstashing, can we uh, select, right? We can uh, no, select only one from that uh, list. See, again, I'm repeating. You stashed here, listen carefully. You stashed with minus P, okay? You stashed only file one. You got a stash number created here as stash zero, Okay. You unstash stash zero means the same thing you are unstashing, isn't it? File one only will be unstashed. You got that point? No, no. Actually, my, my question was something like this. Okay. Uh, so while stashing, I haven't even used uh, minus P. Okay. So by default, uh, for example, file one and file two got moved to temperature. Okay. So while unstashing, can we uh, no, uh, no, no, restrict to the only file one movement back to working directory? 
Even I am answering the same, Praveen. See, you did git stash p1. Right? See, listen here. You don't have a separate command. Same command, but which is doing the same thing. If you are talking about command, you don't have a separate command there. Like git, stash, git unstash minus p, you don't have. But you do it with respect to stash numbers. You did minus p means a stash number is created, right? That stash number is only for that particular file, file one only. You unstash, that means you get only that file one. You don't have a separate command for it. But logically, this is doing the same. That's what I mean to say. Okay. You will not have a separate command to unstash or separate file. Whenever you are stashing, okay. you get a separate stash number, right? It all depends on that stash number. When you unstash that stash number, you get what you stashed only. Only that particular file. So you are achieving the functionality, but you don't need a separate command for it. Logically, the same command is doing it. If you see logically, the same command stash pop or apply with a stash number is doing whatever file you need. Understood the logic? Uh, see, uh, Pradeep, my, my, might be sorry for the confusion. Okay, so what I was referring, right? So for, if, for example, right, I have two files uh, in my working directory. Okay, it's unstaged. So if I use stash command, both F, file one and file two move to the temporary shelves, Correct. right? So if I want to, no, no, oh, no, do, oh, no, I, if I need to work only on the file one, right back, I just want file one only back to my working directory. Hmm. So how can I bring only file one from temporary shelf back to working directory? But initial stash then on for two files. That will not be possible. If you have done stash okay. for both of them, then if you want to separate, it will not be possible. What you have to do, you have to do partial stash minus P. Mm -hmm. So only that okay. file is stash. You get a stash number. You unstash that stash number. You get that particular file. Okay. If you okay. have stashed them together, then separating them will not be possible. Sure. So this is all about stash. This is more than uh, required. Okay, we don't use all of this. But like I said, we were doing it thoroughly, get thoroughly more than required. Okay, this is all not required, but still we were learning end to end everything, almost everything. So if you master the things, whichever we are learning here, here in Git, you are, you are all set about it. You can handle any interview question or you can do anything on Git individually in the projects. Okay. So that is about stash and we have another advanced concept called rebase. Can I proceed? First, I'll explain it theoretically and then we'll go for the demo. Good to go? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's look into another concept called rebase. This is again far advanced concept. Okay, let's look into this uh, with a scenario. Let's suppose there is a master branch. Okay, here I am considering two commits like commit A and commit B. Okay, see these are nothing but IDs. We can't refer that 5, 3, 6, 4, A. I am writing with the alphabets. Okay, two commits, commit A, commit B. Now I made a branch B2. Obviously, it will also have those commits, correct? Commit A, commit B. Yes. Okay, fine. Then parallel development started. Okay, development is happening parallelly as days goes by. Here I made some commit C on master. Is this available on B2? Is commit no. C available? Not there. No. Right? There were two separate branches. Okay, then here also we made some commits like commit D. Development is happening, which is good. Then one day I need to have this commit C into B2 branch. This commit C should be into this B2. What is that called as? Like, what should I do to integrate changes from this master to B2? What should we do? Merge. We merge. merge it. 
after merging, what would be the commit history of B2? Have you ever noticed how the commit history changes after merge? It would be like commit A, commit B, commit D if there is no conflict. If there is a conflict, it would be again commit A, commit B, but some other commit. This ID will change if there is a conflict. If you have not noticed, observe this. Uh, sorry, conflict scenario. This is no conflict scenario. Okay. Right. Whatever it is, if you have noticed, whatever be the case, a new commit ID will be added as the topmost ID into the destination branch when you merge. Observe it when you are doing hands-on. It would be the same ID if there is no conflict. ID will change if it is a conflict, but whatever it is, a new commit ID will be added into the destination branch because you are merging. Okay. This is what merge does. But now what I need is, yes, I need the same functionality. I need those master branch changes should come and sit here, but the log history should be rewritten. How it should be rewritten, how you want it. I just want it to be commit A, commit B, then commit C, then commit D. Means I don't want to add a topmost branch just because we are, I'm sorry, I don't want it to add as a topmost commit just because we are merging. Then I want this. This means what is this one? This is shows linear development. Linear development means it shows as though first changes happen in parent, all parent changes. Like as per the time step. As per the time step means first A was made, then B, then C. Then the child commits. Means I want to look at a linear development. Whereas this shows parallel development, isn't it? Some changes from parent, then again from child, sorry, some changes from yeah, parent, parent means master, then child, again some changes from parent. It is all showing parallel development, which makes the project clumsy. If you want a clean linear log history, I want a clean because I just want to understand whenever I see, okay, I know these are from parent, these are next child. So if you want a clean linear log history, then you can go for this rebase. Clean linear log history. Also, it avoids new commit ideas just because you are merging. See, logically what should happen? You are merging means those changes should come and sit in here, right? That's what rebase does. It also shows as though you have created a branch here. Suppose, let's say someone created a branch at this point, let's say B3. This is how the log history of B3 would be, isn't it? So it shows as though you have created a branch at point C, at commit C. That is what is called rebase. Functionality wise, same. It is also a kind of merge. Rebase is also a kind of merge functionality wise, but it will rewrite the log history in such a way that your changes will be altered. I mean, your log history will be altered. At some point of time, if you see, it will show you clean linear log history, which is called a rebase. Got it, all of you? Any questions? Got the concept? Yeah. Yeah. First, all the parent commits will be arranged as per the time stamp. As per time stamp means first A is made, not C. So first A, then B, then C. Then all the child commits as per the time stamp again. That's how log history will be altered, which is called rebase. Rebase is a far advanced concept. There is a thumb rule that rebase should not be done on local, uh, sorry, should be done only on local branches. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have shared your branches, pushed your branches. Don't ever rebase them. Okay, because if, if you rebase your log history, it would be something else from others. Right? You don't want to mess up that. So your log history will be rewritten. Uh, Pretty, what is the benefit apart from uh, this log rewriting? Uh, the first approach? thing is clean history. Okay, simple clean history. If you keep on merging, 
those ids will be added your log history would be very difficult to understand so if you want that's what if you want to have mm -hmm. linear log history so that at any point of time you can understand what is happening that is what is rebase generally this would be done for smaller brand uh, sorry smaller simple projects okay this is one type of rebase which is for local branches this we won't use much but there is another kind of rebase called pull with rebase okay that is helpful and that is used mostly in reality we will see that also in tomorrow's that is with respect to remote that is more vital but this is the concept behind that as well this is the basic concept okay shall we go for uh, hands on on this yeah let's see okay so first let's keep please keep muted everyone if you don't have a question and you have a question i'll mute and speak out otherwise please keep muted okay now let's check the log It log one line. So you have so many comments, you can continue with this, but just I want to stick to the diagrammatic representation, like commit A, commit B. I want to discard all these four commits. Can I do that? How to clean up? How to do? How to discard successive four commits? Can you help me? Get a reset. Hmm. Then you can put that number. Ready. Okay. I think two four zero. I want this to be the topmost, right? Get reset hard, correct? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. want this to be the topmost hmm. comment. So done. You don't need to do this mandatorily to rebase, just to represent, to relate to the diagrammatic representation. I was doing this. This is commit A, this is commit B on master. Now I would like to create a branch called B2. How to create a branch now? Get branch B2. Correct. Master, right? So yeah. branch is created. I'm still on master branch. Okay, now see I have these changes. Fine. On master, I would like to create one more commit. Okay. File 3.txt. Okay, now okay, master changes something like that. So I get the three comments on master. Okay, fine. Now let's go to B2. Here I have only two files, correct? So I am making some commits here as well. Let's say file four. Okay, done. Now git add file four. Okay. Git comment minus m b2 file. Oh. Sorry, it's okay. BEFL, it's okay. Commit message is old. That's fine. So now, if you see three files, a log of B2, this is log of master. Now I want this is A, B, C. Okay, let me put it in the notepad for you to refer better. Okay, I'm just placing them here. It's not copied. Okay, 
Let me increase this font. Okay, this one. So this is the log of which one? Log of P2. Okay, this is log of master. Okay, this is the log of master. So now you can consider this like commit A, commit C. Sorry, commit A, commit B. This is commit C. Now I made a branch here, commit A, commit B, and this is commit D. Now I want to integrate. Now I want to integrate changes from this master to B2 means the C commit should come and sit in between here. Correct? C should come and sit in here. This 1C, B149 should come and sit in here. Correct? Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah, now what you do? Get rebase master. Correct? This is how you do rebase. Now, get rebase master. See, it says successfully rebase. Okay, you got the file. That's fine. That's like a merge. You got the file. Check the log, which is important. Log of B2. See here? Notice here. Where 1C, 1, uh, 1C, 1B came in. Do you see? This is the log of B2 after rebase. Do you see that? This came in here. 1C, 1B. This is the one, right? This came in between. Do you notice this? This is the latest commit. ID will change, but it's the same commit message and all. Do you notice that? So let me put here. This is master branch. Okay, this is commit A. Okay, this is commit A initially. Then this is B. Okay, this is C. I made a branch at B. So this is A, this is B. And I have got D here. Later on when I rebase, what happened? This is commit A, commit B. C was not added as a topmost commit. Rather, C was added here than this commit D. Observe this now. Understood what has happened? Yes. Yeah. C came in here. Means initially these are parent commits than the child commits. C was not added as a topmost. They were added in the order. Initially all the parent commits. These are all parent commits than all the child comments. Linear, parallel, linear development. Clean, linear log history, which is called the rebase. Functionality was same. You got the file three, whichever in this commit C, like uh, merge it, uh, functionality wise, it was same. Got the concept? This is what is rebase. Uh, this rebase, like I said, should be done only for local branches because if you have shared it with others, their log history would be different. It will mess up. So this is confined only for local branches. Until you push to remote, you can do it. Once you have started pushing to remote, you should not do this kind of rebase. But there is another kind of rebase called pull with rebase. Okay, that is more widely used on remote. That also we'll see once we are on remote repositories. So these are all the concepts we have done. We have done so many things all on local repository. Till now, it's on our local, right? Now it's time you can go to remote. We have done so many things. Now you can go to remote and share your changes with others. Okay, that remote repository is nothing but, you might have heard about it, right? You have GitHub, which serves like a remote repository, GitHub or a Bitbucket, GitLab, all of this serves as remote repositories. In this course, we'll be learning GitHub. 
If you learn GitHub again, Bitbucket, they were all very similar. If you know one, you can work on anything else. So that's what remote repository, that's where GitHub comes into picture. Commit ID seems different after rebase for D2 in B2 branch. Correct. Commit ID will change. But the order is the one important thing. Linear log history. First all parent commits, then all the child. That's what you have to uh, notice. ID will change, but same message. It's the same ID if you notice. Same commit message also. ID may change. ID will change. Any more questions on rebase? So on the remote, it is not recommended to do this rebase, right? Because this it rebase is confined only for local branches. On remote, okay. we have rebase. That's a different uh, type. Means concept is same, but we do it differently. We will look into that also tomorrow. Okay. That is very widely used than this one. Okay. So now we can go to remote. We shall take up this remote repositories tomorrow. Any more questions you have, you can ask me. See, whenever you do the hands-on, please follow the drive. Okay, here is the drive documentation of all the things we were discussing. We will take up remote repositories tomorrow. Also, take up the quiz. Were you all completing your quiz? See, on daily basis, if you complete, it would be very easy for you <clears throat> to register the things better. <clears throat> Please take up this quiz three, quiz four as well. Okay, tomorrow we shall have a remote repository discussion. Git stash, okay, how to create new stash. So many things were there related to stash. Please go through it and complete your hands-on. And from tomorrow, like there will be a new uh, uh, Zoom link created and it will be posted in the dedicated WhatsApp group. Today, all the registered students will be moved to the separate group. As I was busy from a couple of days, uh, we did not make a group. Tomorrow you'll be moved to, I mean, today, by end of the day, you'll be moved to a separate group. And a new uh, Zoom link will be shared. Any more questions? Uh, Preeti, just I want to know how you are handling this Kubernetes kind of your Docker Kubernetes and uh, those kind of uh, parts. How in the sense you mean I'm, the lab? Yes, I am very much interested to that part. In no, uh, about uh, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I am looking for CD part instead of the CI part. You got it right. I got it. So continuous, I uh, continuous deployment. As I am into VMware Linux. So I am looking for a CD part. So, uh, so uh, in this in this uh, in in my situation, so I want to deploy means uh, maintain Kubernetes uh, uh, infrastructure everything like master node everything, mm -hmm. cluster certification everything. So in this case, how it will be helpful for me? So you are are you handling all these kind of Continuous deployment will be done. That is what is CI/CD pipeline. On the day when I have shown you, complete CI/CD pipelines will be built. So for CD clusters required, we'll be creating cluster and working on the clusters. We will do all of that. That will be done on the AWS platform. How to create yeah. AWS account, everything will be dealt. Once this Git is done, we'll be starting with in Linux, AWS account creation. Then will happen. And by the way, to learn CD, you definitely need Git because Docker files will be placed on the Git repositories from where you have to pull them, containerize, build a Docker image, deploy them as pods on the Kubernetes cluster. So definitely all of these are required for CD part as well. Okay. Uh, means so you are more concentrated on AWS EKS and everything. Uh, how you are uh, teaching us in uh, like VMware environment creating a master node see i uh, am installing. creating a cluster on aws meaning 
I'm not first I'll create a cluster without any using any managed services like EKS. Remember without using any managed services first I'll create a cluster like a, it's, it would be a cluster on-prem kind of cluster setup. Means the cluster I create here you can create on your on-prem as well or any cloud. Then later so, on I'll okay. also later okay, on are, uh, talking, okay. uh, yeah continue please. Later on, I'll also show you creating a cluster using managed service with EKS. So, so that once after this course, you can able to work on the clusters on on-prem as well as on on-cloud. Okay. Okay. Fine. See, because so, here we don't have our own virtual machines. Okay. You can't create your own virtual machines. You may create one or two on your laptop, but your cluster requirement will be huge that will not be possible to have your own VMs. That's not required also. What I'll do, I'll take some VMs on AWS, but assume them like on on-prem and we'll create a cluster without using any managed services so that you get exposure that you can create a cluster on any on-prem uh, environment. Then we will also create a cluster in this course using some managed services like EKS. So you will also get an idea on how you can create. This is a managed services, actually a paid service. That also I'll show you. So that you get exposure to everything. Okay, fine. So, uh, if I get any doubt, uh, the only way I can reach you in the class are uh, means can we have a discussion, a separate discussion? What class, we are like? having separate discussion, right? Before the class, after the class, we'll have a separate discussion for any queries. Uh, if you have any query questions during the hands on, you can post them in the WhatsApp group. I am also working. Okay, so in between, if you want to have a call, that will not be possible. In the class, we can have the discussions. Separate discussions possible in the class, like after once the class is done. But if you have any other thing to discuss, you can call me on mobile. But doubt clarification uh, in, through WhatsApp and in the class. Okay, fine. Thanks, Vidhi. Anything else from anyone? All right, then do the hands-on till this part and get ready for the next session. Tomorrow, we shall go to remote repositories and uh, then eventually we'll step into the Linux basics and so on. Okay, step by step, we'll go and create the CACD pipeline as we have a demonstrated on the day one, like on the demo part. All right, then thanks everyone. Have a good day. See you all tomorrow. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.